Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. We are going to discuss about the threat actor and threat intelligence. Okay. Okay. See, the first thing we have to understand that what we are talking about is, is the risk. In the last session, we had already discussed what exactly the risk is in context of information and security, right? Yes. So according to information security, risk is anything which will going to create an issue for you, right? Or on, on a formal term, probability of a certain event and their negative consequences, right? Yes. And it could be anything, right? Anything which is going to impact your business. Remember, don't uh, assume that it is only about the cyber threats which is going to impact your business. See, at the yeah. end of the day, uh, cybersecurity also implemented to ensure that our continuity is not broken. If, if business, is, business continuity is broken, definitely the impact will be there on the organization. <clears throat> so we have to understand that why exactly this risk is coming it out to the organization. I mean, there are several factors definitely. And if, if there is any need to detect those factors, then what exactly it is going to be? Right. Right. So there are a few things which we have to actually understand. Right. Mm -hmm. Those few things are the first thing is basically what is vulnerability. Now we already know what exactly the vulnerability is. So any loophole in the system which will give chances for the attacker to compromise your system. That is the vulnerability. Simple loopholes are the vulnerabilities. And vulnerabilities could be anything. Right. Right. But most of the time here in the information security world, we are going to talk about the vulnerability, which is uh, mostly technical. Okay. It means anything which is going to having issue on the operating system and any other thing. So there are a couple of things which we have to again understand for this chapter as well. Like uh, the first thing is, see, there are some assets we have, right? We are actually trying to protect our asset. And let's assume that this asset, let's assume that there is a web, there is a e-commerce website, Amazon. Yes. For them, their asset is their information management system, right? Their information management system could be their web server. So let's assume their web server is down today. Will they be able to make any business? No. Why? Okay. Because no any customer able to make any order. They don't have any interface. Right. So that is okay. definitely going to be impacted. There are the, another asset you can say is the database server. Mostly all the orders might be placed in the database so they can fetch the details from there and then send it for the further processing. Right. If it is not available again, there is a business impact. Right. Here I had taken just two example, but like that, that's so many different issues, which particular organization may face. Right. Now the question is what exactly the issue on the web server or what exactly the issue in the database server may come. See the generally the issue may come. Why? Because there is a certain vulnerability we have over those assets. So if there is any web server, so there's a possibility that there is a vulnerability placed and what could be the vulnerability? Let's assume for the web server, what could be the vulnerability? See vulnerability could be divided into two generally divided into two major category. First is uh, it is in it is intentionally planned or planted on the system. Okay. And the another mm -hmm. is unintentional. We are not aware about. Okay. okay. Intentionally <laughs> planned by whom? Like the again, uh, some threat actors are there. Threat. See, okay. In your organization, there might be possibility that some users are not very happy. Like mm -hmm. this month, I mean, this is the appraisal time going on. And in this appraisal time, some employee didn't got to a good appraisal. Now that employee becomes the disgruntled employee for the organization. They are not happy. They can do anything now. Right. Why? Because they are not happy, right? Uh, might be their colleague got good appraisal. He didn't got a good appraisal. And might be he have some issue with the management. You know, it could be any reason. 
So there's a certain possibility that a particular employee is actually implanting some issues on the system, right? By planting some software, right? Which is that software will give the access of the remote of your system very easily to the attacker. Right. right. So vulnerability generally could be anything, but simply we can say that if a certain issues are there which is possibly give access to the attacker very easily then that right. is going to be the major issues for us i mean you can say the major vulnerability but but on a simple note vulnerability is a loophole and loophole could be anything like let's us to suppose that i'm to, which are because i'm talking about this web server so this web server is not patched so what is patch patching see normally patches released by the vendor of the operating system let's suppose you are using windows operating so microsoft generally release the patches what is the patches so patches is basically the security fixes the group of software which is going to help you to fix a certain issue see whenever microsoft or any other vendor release any software or any operating system they release as per their best knowledge i mean they they know what is the issue accordingly they will fix the issue and then they will release in the market but over the time there is some new risk detected and an attacker will find a new way to move into your system mm -hmm. so that is a vulnerability which previously your vendor was not aware about and might be attacker is now aware about and they are able to figure it out how to take benefit of that vulnerability see previously we were only thinking that hey the only way to enter into any person house is the door right? right but the attacker find a new way hey window is also there we can move inside the home right so that is the same way i mean yeah. uh, generally is actually going to happen so if your system is not patched and microsoft or at any other vendors like linux vendors release time to time patches after a month after two month i mean whenever some severe issues detected they will release the patch and you will supposed to test those patches and install that patches on your system if it is not then your system is vulnerable for the issues which is detected right so that is the one issue vulnerability could be administrative administrative vulnerability means see administrative vulnerability means as an administrator i'm supposed to do good things for my system or for my for my organization system but there is a complete possibility that either i forget or i am not able to perform that activity because of my knowledge so there could be n number of things so let's suppose i forget to enable firewall so firewall is one of the software in the operating system which will help you to filter the traffic let's suppose you forget to enable firewall you forget to configure antivirus so those are the administrative vulnerability is done by the administrator it is their mistake because generally in the organization we have a baselining things so there's some baseline we will define so before making before publishing any system to the production environment we have to ensure that we are putting all the requirements on the system which is captured in a baseline document so there is a baseline document normally organization will create which will define that what are the software we have to install on those assets there is a possibility either you forget or intentionally it had been not done and in such case your system is vulnerable right so vulnerability is simply the mistakes or loopholes which will allow any threat to take this vulnerability benefit right so if there is any vulnerability who will be getting benefited it is a threat so it is the threat who will take benefit of this vulnerability and will compromise your asset
will take control over your asset. But the question is, who is creating this threat? So this threat is going to create it by the threat actor. It could be a person, it could be a process in your system, it could be anything, right? So anyone who is getting benefited because of this vulnerability, that is called the threat actor. So it could be a some another country who is doing attack against a certain country. It could be a certain or another organization. It could be another person, right? So threat actor is the person or process who will get benefited if this threat is able to exploit or you can say compromise this vulnerability. And we already know that it's all about this threat and vulnerability. The combination of both of them is what called as what? Risk. Right. So what is the threat actor now we know? Some of the attribute like uh, of this threat actor is basically it could be either the internal threat actor or it could be the external. So remember threat actor is not like uh, it is only coming from outside. It was previously, you know, we were thinking that you know, the threat actor could be only outsider, but no, the recent analysis shown that most of the threats that threat actors are basically coming from inside the organization itself. Right. It means the possibility is there that threats are internal to your organization and they are trying to compromise your data. It means we have to very much attentive when we are actually dealing with the configuration of our assets because if we fail to do that properly the system compromise chances are maximum right one important thing we have to understand that whenever we are trying to detect these threats so normally sometimes we are aware about the behavior of the threats like let's suppose virus attack happening on your system there's some certain behavior through which you can identify whether your system is infected or not like let's suppose your system is system files are automatic getting deleted or automatically getting corrupted right so this is an indication that might be certain virus had already infected your system right so this is called as what these are the known threat actions right which you have to actually understand. I mean, how, what is going on there? Plus also you have to understand that if there is any asset, there could be a certain motivation around the threat actor. See, if I don't have the motivation to compromise your system, I'm, I must be getting some benefit, right? But if I don't see any benefit there, then it, there is a fair amount of chance that I'm not going to do that. I will not do the attack. Why? Because there is no benefit of the attack. So there should be a proper motivation. See, if someone is going to tell me that, hey, if you attack on that system, I will give you $50,000. That could be a motivation for me. Money could be a motivation for me. Right. So there could be a motivation because without motivation, you know, you just going to check some opportunity for the attack. It means I will try to do attack just for a fun on your system. If I don't succeed, then I will ignore. After that, I will don't do that. Why should I make a fair efforts if I'm not getting any benefits, right? So even that one too, you may have to analyze that. Is there any motivation of the attacker? If they are able to compromise the system, my system, if they, get, they will get something there, right? Similarly, uh, you know, the threat actor chances of compromise compromising your system could be accidental as well. Accidentally, they are able to reach out to your system, right? Or unintentional, you can say. But yeah, that is very much important that if they have the motivation, they will try to do attack again and again on your system until unless they are actually succeeded. Right. So these are some of the attribute you can say for the threat actor. So some of the attribute actor we can tell it could be internal or external. There could be a motivation. Right. And 
the level of sophistication which is assigned to the system i mean there could be a chances that fair amount of damage can be done to the organization right one important thing that you know normally these threat actors are basically called as the hackers as well right so when i say hackers generally we categorize hacker in three category right call as black hat hackers so black hat hackers are basically the person or group which actually have some bad intention it means they can give you some damage but organization also hire those threat actors okay to give you benefits so the another category of hackers we have is called the white hat hackers so what they do so you are going to hire them so before this black hat hackers are going to succeed you will find the vulnerability you will find the loophole you will tell them what is the impact of this attack and accordingly you can ask your security team to improve security team to improve the security so white hat hacker will be working for your organization not against your organization right and there is a middle ground between them is called as the gray hat hacker right so what is gray hat hacker see gray hat hacker don't have any bad intention but like white hat hacker whom they have the permission so normally white hat hackers have the permission to do the testing but gray hat hacker don't have the permission because the organization had not hired but at the same time they don't have any bad intention as well they will just try to find the loophole and then they will report you when you get this information you can take it in multiple way right you can take it uh, uh, in a positive note and if you're taking as a positive in a positive note it means you will award that particular hacker might be you will hire them or might be you will award them with some gifts right but yeah remember the chances are there that some users are actually taking their response in a different way why you had uh, done testing without my permission on my organization right and in such case they might take some legal action against you as well so it's a, it's a very careful activity which we have to do although this this is now getting promoted worldwide so there is a group of users normally we have here that is called as the bug bounty users so bug bounty users are basically the freelance uh, security consultant or security testers who will test your organization security posture and let you know and you will reward them so this activity is getting popular right because if you are going to hire a person then you are very then you have very limited views but if really let's suppose that around the globe everyone is testing your system and then letting you know what are the loopholes then you have multiple eyes and accordingly you can detect threats soon and accordingly you can prevent that issue soon as well so the main idea is to protect the organization by taking help of those users right there is one more group of users we have here that is called as the script kiddy guys you know script kiddy guys are basically the new person or the person who actually just learned the hacking skill right and they just try they just just wanted to try somewhere they don't uh, understand the consequences if they do attack or they don't understand the consequences they just do that attack they be, they're just trying to check whether my skills are basically right or not right so, so these group of users are actually called the script getting who without knowing the consequences doing the attack here and there which is definitely a, again a bad thing only but unfortunately we have such users also in our environment right so i hope these terms are clear to you what is threat actor and what are the different type of threats yes okay. then there is a one more term we have that is called as a hacktivist hacking and activist so basically a 
or individual or group who combine hacking skill with activities activist agendas it means they use okay. their technical expertise to promote social or political change often by okay. conducting cyber attack i mean let's suppose that uh, uh, by conducting cyber attack i am able to log into your facebook account and you are the you have mul- multiple followers on instagram or might be on facebook and via your account i am able to post something which is going to influence a group number a large group of users mm-hmm. for a certain view right so even that right. one too can be done by the attackers so these group of attackers are called as the hacktivists right again uh, we're just trying to get some social benefit or political benefit by doing so right. similarly there is one term we are also utilizing here that is called as the apt that is called advanced persistent threat see persistent mm-hmm. means regular regular right and advanced means the user or group of users who have a good knowledge over the cyber security see remember in the cyber security we uh, to to learn in depth we have to have multiple technology understanding as well right which is mm-hmm. helping you to understand because when we are going to do the breach attack it is not only about the windows it is the linux as well it is the mac os as well the routers are as well switches as well so normally a good a uh, hacker know all these technology right mm. so when it comes to apt advanced persistent threat it means it is the user or group of users who do the attack and if they don't succeed they don't uh, you know surrender they simply perform a- attack again and again again and again to understand where the loopholes are and accordingly they are able to get the benefit right so it means advanced persistent threats are the users who will not give up until unless they are succeeded and in such case definitely they will try with a multiple techniques and to try with the multiple techniques he must know those technology as well because there is a possibility that there is no any vulnerability in your system so but might be there is a vulnerability in your smart television right so in such case i may able to compromise your smart tv or might be router right and mm-hmm. definitely in such way i'm able to move inside your house and from there i can steal your data very easily so those group of users are called as the advanced persistent threat right right so these are the some of the things or some of the uh terms which you have to actually understand see at the end of the day all these things are happening because there a group of users are getting benefited so you can say your competitors are actually getting benefited right and right. we are trying to protect ourselves from them only so let me just take you so what we had discussed just is what is vulnerability threat and then risk impact we are already aware about attribute of a threat actors we had just discussed then hacktivist or hacker team script giddy guys right criminal syndicate and competitors so normally we have a certain competitors right who is actually looking to get access of your data mm-hmm. insider threat actor so malicious insider threat we have has or uh, has or has had uh, authorized access see remember these malicious insider it means the user mm-hmm. who is working in your organization they may or may not have the administrative permission over the system but even if right. they have the limited permission uh, the damage can be done so huge mm-hmm. right because normally attacker assume that they will whenever they are going to attack on your system they will not get the administrative access they will get the access whatever access or permission you have on your system and might be if you had taken uh, any laptop from your organization you must know that on that laptop you can't install any third party software okay. why because they had not given you permission right but if attacker will attack they will get the permission what you have 
but attacker know how to escalate that permission how to bypass that permission right so if they are able mm. to do that bypassing it means they can access your administrative permission and from that user they can conduct a attack on another system present on the network it means slowly slowly they can move and do the lateral movement and they will try to compromise other systems which is present in the network as well right so right. they may have or may not have the authorized access so it could be your uh, employees the contractors or might be the partners remember the breaches or the malicious insider could be any of them so it is not only about the employees it could be your contractors or might be the partners who is basically having few some level of access over your system and they will try to get this just for the uh, some some financial benefit or business advantage right so there are two term normally we use espionage and sabotage right so in sabotage basically it's a insider threat where employees are taking data or destructing the data or destructing the assets and there is a term we are using that is called espionage where employees are getting the sensitive data of the organization and selling it to their partners and definitely if you am selling it that is going to be the major disadvantage of for the organization because if they if my partners know what are the strategy i am using for my business that could be devastating uh, for my organization again both is basically not good if you are destroying or if you are selling something to the partner organization and at the end of the day we have to control everything how can we do that by checking what are the activities happening by those users in your organization that's the reason organization continuously do monitor monitoring is very important aspects of cyber security so they completely uh, continuously monitor the things to ensure they are able to understand what is going on in the organization uh remember it and the threat actor could be unintentional as well and it is because of the weak policies configured in the system weak adherence to the policy lack of training or shadow it so shadow it is basically where the decision over the purchase of it resource will be done by the management as well and normally management does not aware about what are the technological benefit of a certain tool right and in such case if they are involved just for the sake of financial benefit they might purchase a tool which is not very much good for the organization right <clears throat> so i hope this these things are clear to you yes cool thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.